I feel so good I've got to scream. It was the concert of a lifetime, the pinnacle of a summer-long love fest for the tragically hip, and it didn't disappoint. They left it all on the stage, and the fans left it all on the floor. They're our family band, and just when Gordy speaks, he just, he's, I love it. It broke my heart, and I was elated to be here at the same time. I just, I can't even express what it felt like. Flashback nearly four decades before the boys from Kingston first met. A young man with a charming smile and golden curls walked into his grade nine teacher, Judy Watts' classroom. Oh, he stood out for me as somebody who was undoubtedly going to be successful. In grade nine drama, he performed a mime to the music of The Exorcist that people talked about and said, wow, like what, what a presence. So the dance and the, the movement was sort of legendary even in grade nine and grade 10. She did it was in high school where Downey began meeting the musicians who would become the Tragically Hip. In a town filled with cover bands, they developed a raw rock sound all their own. Former Kingston DJ Steve Jordan remembers those early gigs. You got a sense that it could explode at any time, but you also got the sense, well, if it doesn't, this is still an awesome moment. That they made you live in the moment, every show that they do. At a time when many artists were aiming for success south of the border, Gord, Gord, Paul, Johnny and Rob sang our stories. This was a band that sang about Hugh McLennan, David Milgard, uh, like referencing Eric's trip in in songs. Just like it's, I, I, just I'm not doing it in a look at me. This is a, a showboating Canadian way. It was just in a very honest, like no, actually this is where we come from. By '91, the hip were enjoying both artistic and commercial success and yet doing it on their own terms. Like, they're both square and weird at the same time, which is, I mean, kind of like Canada in a way. I like to think that, for sure, one of the reasons the hip are um, popular is because they are different. I think it flatters us, potentially, as a nation. Rush's Getty Lee counts himself as a fan. Their sound is sort of born to me out of folk and blues and amplified and the voice of, of Gord Downey and his poetry have given it a very, very unique tone. And I had a feverish dream. But the hip wouldn't be the hip without Downey's emotional, enigmatic lyrics, something friend and author Joseph Boyden has always appreciated. It's one thing to be a brilliant poet and then have a person read your words on the page. It's a different thing to take that up onto a stage and live those words. You know, what Gord is able to do is to capture a novel's worth sometimes of, of content and of beauty in a single song. And you only have a few verses to do this. The stamina Gord Downey displayed on this summer's tour was incredible, given he's battling incurable brain cancer. It's not the first time Downey's faced challenges and channeled that into his art, as he did when his wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. It makes you want to hurry up, change. I mean, because you know that nothing will be the same anymore. You know, you're basically, you're saying, I'm going to live again without illusion. You're going to be real. During the Man Machine Poem Tour, Gord Downey has been living that life on stage in a string of sold-out shows. A way to say farewell, perhaps, but as Sarah Harmer explained on cue, it's also a chance to celebrate. And I really have felt like um, culturally and emotionally and um, as a sense of identity, the hip have really sustained a lot of people in this country over the years and just given us, you know, new ideas about ourselves and about our history. For a boy in Fiddler's Green. And although Gord Downey is battling an incurable disease, this story isn't over. They never said this is their last tour and it's, this is a matter of, this is our kind of, we have the time now, let's do this. We have the the health, let's do this now, and it's beautiful. And I know Gord is a strong man, and his family are beautiful and amazing, and there's more to come. Eli Glasner, CBC News, Toronto.